Hey there, RC Girl here. Today we are taking a look at the Creality K1C 3D printer. This is part of their flagship line, one of the nicest 3D printers they make and actually the nicest one I've ever tried. Also my first enclosed printer. Lots of different features, including a 600 millimeter a second max printing speed, which is so fast. It can print in really tough carbon fiber filaments out of the box, has a beautiful sleek design over the air and Wi-Fi printing, as well as pretty much auto everything. It does a lot for you. I've been testing this out for about a month now, rapidly printing tons of different files for my Axial SCX6, this giant one six scale RC crawler behind me. In this video, we're gonna unbox it. I'll show you guys how I set it up. We'll walk through all the different features, analyze some of my test prints, and then I'll share my thoughts on whether I think it's worth the $559 price tag. Let's dive on in. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. I'm all about helping people grow in the radio control hobby. So a lot of my 3D printing has focused on printing scale accessories, RC parts, adapters, things like that. This printer was sent to me by Sane Smart. I will put a link in the description box below of everything I mentioned in this video. It is also segmented into chapters so you can check out different parts of the video and skip around. This is actually my third Creality printer that I've tried. So I'm not an expert, but I've been printing for about two years, getting really great prints from all the printers. So that's definitely the goal. We're gonna be using this to print out a lot of very detailed parts for my SCX6 here, which we will cover for sure in a ton of detail in my next video. So subscribe if you don't wanna miss that. Let's dive on in. So really great thing about this printer right off the bat, unboxing it, super quick setup. Printer is mostly assembled for you out of the box, about a five to 10 minute setup time, a couple more minutes linking it to your computer and your Wi-Fi network. Also included with this printer are some stickers, a warranty and service card, and a basic instructions manual, pretty much a quick start guide. We also get some goodies like a nozzle unclogger, some basic tools, a rubber strip to prevent the cable organizers on the hot end from scratching your lid, some hardware, and a glue stick. This is to help your prints adhere to the bed, though I always say if you need to use this, your print settings probably aren't correct. We also get some flush cutters for snipping your filament at 45 degrees before installing it, as well as cleaning these supports off your prints. We're also going to get a scraper, a wrench, some lube for our rails, as well as a USB thumb drive that includes a couple pre-sliced files for you to print out. Now we're going to link the printer to a Wi-Fi network that allows you to send prints wirelessly as well as install over the air firmware updates. Using this QR code scanner here, we're going to link the printer to my Creality Cloud account, or you can make one if you don't already have one. Creality Cloud lets you monitor your prints, upload files, send files to your printer remotely. We're also going to install Creality Print, Creality Slicer software included on the thumb drive, or install your slicer of choice. I've also printed successfully with this printer using Kira and Prusa slicers, though I had to create a custom profile since these currently don't have preset profiles for the K1C at the time of filming this. Once we've selected an object to print and sliced it in our software of choice, there are four ways to send prints to the K1C. 
First is using the USB thumb drive included and manually transferring your sliced file from your computer to the printer itself. The second way is using Wi-Fi. I was only able to get this working properly using Creality Print. I went to the device tab and went to add printer. You can manually add with your IP address from the printer or you can do an auto scan. This allows you to send prints from Creality Print wirelessly as well as do one click printing. It'll start your prints for you remotely. The third way is uploading your sliced file to Creality Cloud and starting your print remotely. That's what I do when I send my prints from Cura or Prusa. Lastly, you can print from the Creality Cloud app from your phone. Very cool that you can slice and send files from your phone to the printer. Tried this out, it worked great. You can also plug your printer's IP address into a web browser to monitor the status of your prints, even check the video feed. This only works if you are on the same Wi-Fi network as your printer. However, you can do the same thing on Creality Cloud or in the phone app. You don't have to be on the same network. You can monitor your prints from anywhere. Now that we have the printer set up, let's walk around and take a look at all the features on the printer itself. Nice looking printer, really sleek design. Our door here is actually made out of glass. Kind of nice, the tinted glass. And our sides actually are all tinted plastic. Top is also plastic here. Got nice rubberized feet, keeping it super stable. We have a 4.3 inch color touchscreen display. Here you're gonna see your nozzle temperature, the bed temperature, and the chamber temperature. There's an LED light that you can turn on and off. We have a USB port here on the front of the printer to use the thumb drive to load prints and also to take off any of the time-lapse videos that are stored on the printer. Taking a look at the rear of the printer, our on and off switch is going to be down here. We have our carbon filter, which is gonna filter out some of the more odorous types of filaments. We have a filament runout sensor here and a filament spool on the rear. They also have a couple options for installing a spool on the side of the printer. They actually have a couple different design ones. This one kind of like a boomerang. And then this one here, I actually found this free print file as well, another spool holder. Otherwise it just comes with the one that you can transfer between the two if you just want to run one filament spool. But I kind of like the option of having two colors available and swapping between those super easily. Our lid here on the top is held on by magnets. It's a little bit of a tight fit to get on and off. And they actually say when your room temperature exceeds 30 degrees Celsius to remove this when you're printing PLA. Some nice cable management here. And then on the side here, we have the little switch for switching between 230 to 115 volts, depending on your location. Super important to make sure that you get that right. For the US, that's gonna be 115. For Europe and elsewhere, it's gonna be 230. Now taking a look on the inside of our printer here, we have the K1C and we have our build volume right on the print bed. We also have a nice smooth PEI magnetic build plate, removable so you can easily get your prints off. You can see it leaves a little bit of a film on there. I clean this with isopropyl alcohol between every print. There's also a nozzle wipe, really like that feature. So no longer do you have to manually clean the nozzle. It'll do that for you between every print. It sort of drags it along the little rubber wiper there. And we have three different fans. So we have the rear one, which vents to the outside. We have one that blows specifically on the model. And then we have a third one here that circulates air around the chamber. This is a Core XY machine. So our Z axis moves up and down and our hot end moves on our X and Y axis. 
Interestingly, this printer actually prints at higher temperatures, so it suggests your nozzle temperature. Usually I print PLA around 205, 210. This calls for 230. Uh, we're gonna take a look at a temperature tower a little bit later. Uh, I don't see a lot of differences, but it seems to have better success on my prints. When I print at the higher temperatures, they suggest right here on this little sticker. One thing that I really like about this, there is a LED light that you can turn on and off. It helps you to observe your prints, but also gives light to a little camera that is mounted. This comes pre-installed, so it'll do a time lapse of every single print. It stores them on here, and it also stores them on Creality Cloud, so you can download them. 1080p, not the highest, highest quality, a little bit grainy, but really nice to be able to see a time lapse of each of your prints. This camera also has AI technology, so if there's spaghettiing happening, if you left a print and it starts to fail, lots of spaghetti appearing, it supposedly should stop your print, pause your print for you so it doesn't cause any harm to the machine. I had a couple prints actually spaghetti, not a ton, but a little bit. You can adjust the sensitivity. I put it on most sensitive and it still didn't stop the print after a little while. I got too nervous, so I actually stopped the print myself. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Here is our hot end. So our filament feeds from the back through this tube into here. There's actually a lock on this. They don't really explain the lock too well in the instructions, but as you're unloading the filament, you unlock it, and when you load the filament, you lock it and seal it in place. This has auto extrude and retract, so when you're changing out filaments, we're just gonna go into the back end here in our settings. You go to extrude retract, it'll auto extrude and retract your filament for you. But we also have a fan here on our hot end. This actually has a steel hardened tip, that allows you to print more abrasive filaments, for example, those that are infused with carbon. So this is the K1C out of the box, can print carbon. You don't have to switch out the nozzle. It also supposedly has a quick swap nozzle. We haven't had to do that yet, so hopefully we don't have to for a little while, but it sounds like they make it super easy to swap nozzles on this. As I mentioned, this has a lot of auto calibration features, including auto bed leveling, which is pretty common nowadays. I printed out a bed calibration in Creality Print, which is just a bunch of concentric squares. Looks like our top corners here are a little bit unlevel, which jibes with the bed mesh that I see here on the print screen. They also have auto Z offset, so there is a pressure sensor in here, and it'll set your Z offset. My Creality Ender 3 KE will get it pretty close, but this one has gotten it spot on pretty much every time. And then lastly, one of my favorite features, it has auto input shaping or resonance calibration. It does this little jiggle. And what it's doing here is measuring the vibrations in the printer itself to correct for that in your prints. So the vibrations of the printer at high speeds will show up in your prints as ringing or ghosting. One way to reduce ringing or ghosting is slowing down the speed of your printer. This one, however, will measure the vibrations in the printer and correct for them, allowing you to print at a lot higher speeds. Very, very cool. Now is a good time to take a look at some of my calibration prints. It's a good idea to do this with every new printer and actually every new filament you use. At a minimum, some of the most important aspects to dial in are speed, temperature, and flow rate. So we'll take a look at some of my prints here. First, I printed the Benchy, which was pre-sliced and included on the thumb drive. I used the Hyper White PLA included with the printer. This is a good benchmark print to check overall print quality, watch for stringing, shifting layers, base layer adhesion, and overhangs. This Benchy looks amazing. Almost perfect, maybe one or two slightly shifted layers here on the side, but really good squish here on our base layer. Really impressive for a 16 minute Benchy. Nice overhangs, really clean top layers. Overall, really like the look of this Benchy. I also printed a XYZ calibration cube. Checks for any artifacts or issues on each of your axes, whether any of the belts are slipping. This one also looks super solid, really clean top surface. If we look super close, we can see a tiny bit of ringing or ghosting. Next, I did their 600 millimeter a second speed test, which is also loaded on the thumb drive. This printed at the printer's top speed of 600 millimeters a second. Super impressive. I can barely even see the layer lines in this, so I think this turned out really nice and clean. 
Next, I did a speed tower. So this starts at 50 millimeters a second up to 150 with each of the layers that increases speed and you can check for the ringing or the ghosting. I actually can't tell the difference. I don't know if you guys can, but I cannot tell the difference between 50 or 150 or actually any of them. I printed a second one at even higher speed. So this one goes from 100 to 200. Actually, I should probably do from 100 to 600, but same thing, I can't see really any differences between any of the speeds. So our printer is doing a good job at the resonance calibration. Next, I printed a temperature tower. And so what this does is it changes the temperature five degrees Celsius with each of the layers from 240 down to 200. This printer actually prefers around 230. So that is the optimum printer temperature it states on the Creality sticker on the printer. Visually, I can't tell the difference between any of the temperatures. Temperature can also affect layer adhesion. So I've been having really good success with printing PLA at 230. Lastly, I did a flow rate calibration. This checks out different flow rates in 5% increments from negative 20 to positive 15. Looking here, positive 15 is way over extruded. You get this really rough surface here. Negative 20 is way under extruded. You're gonna get gaps and holes in your prints. It looks actually like our neutral or zero here printed the best. That means that our printer is already printing at optimum flow rate here. Really impressed with how these calibration prints turned out. Now let's take a look at some of my other prints using different filaments. Alrighty, now let's take a look at some of the parts I've been printing in PLA, also tried carbon fiber filament for the first time. Mostly I've been printing a lot of different scale details and accessories for my Axial SCX6 here. To get the most scale points, definitely need a scale driver and passenger. This is in gray PLA. This is a Knight Customs file, super high quality really nice detailed print here. I also printed out Blake Wilkie's head. He is a professional off-road race driver. I believe they've actually scanned his real face. We're gonna maybe do that to my own head and get my own head scanned so I can print out my own head, which is kind of cool. I tried it in a couple different sizes, trying to get the scale right. I think this might be the head that we're going with. Got a little bit of under extrusion on the cap part there, but not too, too bad. Otherwise, I'm really impressed with the level of detail on the heads. We're gonna have to find a way to mount the head to the body. I also found a female driver. I thought she looked kind of like me. So in the meantime, before I get my head scanned, I think she'll do just fine. And super impressed with the level of detail on these arms here. We have ourselves a scale Haley. <laughs> scale RC girl. One thing we need to do though is align the seam on the rear of the body to hide that a little bit. I actually printed these upside down. So there were a lot of supports on the top of the hat here. So I've used a little Bondo and we're gonna sand that down before we paint it. Some layer lines there. I don't think we're gonna be able to avoid that. We printed this at 0.1 millimeter resolution. I printed out a ton of the heads cause it's really difficult, but I really wanted to get the scale right. I also printed out a couple smaller things like these license plate holders. Gotta get a one six scale or a secret license plate. Also these door handles, pretty clean. Printed out some light lenses in clear PLA. Those just slot right in there. I think those are gonna look really cool. We're gonna paint those as well. I also printed this clipless body mounting system. There's two pins that hold in the body, but instead we install this and it'll just latch without having to use any of the body pins. I also printed a snorkel. This is from Night Customs printed this latch here. This holds the body open kind of like a little hinge to keep the body propped open while you're working on it. These side mirrors here, even these small details are really going to add to the scale look of the body. Of course, I also had to try vase mode. These are actually just a centimeter shy of using the full build volume. I printed this one in silk PLA that's color changing. The first one though, the bottom actually came off unfortunately. I printed it too thin of layers. 
So I printed a second one and that one, I printed the base a little thicker, also increased our line width and increased the temperature of the bed and the hot end by about five degrees. Looks so cool. And then lastly, of course, I had to try a carbon fiber infused filament. So I went with a PETG. I wanted to print a water bottle cage for my mountain bike. I am super impressed with how this print turned out. It seems really solid. We do have a couple little uh, lines that you can see that are visible there, but it doesn't look like it's separated at all. So I think that's just a cosmetic blemish. But yeah, I think this turned out really nice. Alrighty, so after a month with the Creality K1C, what do I think? What are my final thoughts? A couple pros, a couple cons that I'll share. One thing, really nice sleek design. I think for the price you get a lot of features. Really cool modular design where you can have the filament on the side and the rear. Great that it has a lot of auto calibrations, particularly resonance calibration tends to be the more complicated one to set up manually. This allows you to print at a lot faster speeds without getting that ghosting. I have been getting consistently high quality prints from this, not a ton of failures, a couple here and there. Having an enclosed printer allows you to print at higher temperatures, controls the temperature of the chamber, allows you to print with lots of different filaments, which is really cool. One thing, because it does a lot of the auto calibrations at the start of your print, it does take a while to actually get to the starting of a print. So hopefully your settings are all set correctly while it gets to the print. Otherwise, restarting a print is going to add on a couple minutes to your process. One thing I think they should change is putting the micro adjustments on the main screen, being able to quickly make micro adjustments to your Z offset and your flow rate. It's kind of in the back end, a little bit hard to find. To me, those are basic adjustments you should have access to on the main screen. So hopefully maybe they will change that in one of the firmware updates. But all in all, I don't have too many bad things to say about this, at least with my experience. Definitely recommend it for someone that is looking to print lots of different filaments, print really fine details looking for that speed this is definitely a printer you should check out all right i think that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up huge thank you of course to sane smart for sending out the creality k1c to test out on my channel huge thank you also to my patrons on patreon make sure to stick around for the axial scx6 video which is going to be next we'll finish that off so don't miss it or see you later